Welcome to Morning Coffee and Mimosas. I'm Christina. And I'm Joe. We are a father-daughter duo. We come here Sunday mornings, but you can come here anytime you please. We banter about life, about business, and we do it over coffee and mimosas. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Dad. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Always, always enjoy when we get together for this. So this is fun. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So this one's a little bit different. I'm a little under the weather, so we are on Zoom today, yeah. eating our breakfast virtually. That's right. <laughs> Trying something new. So exactly, and it's it seems to be working pretty well. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. And th this is going to be a good test because in a few weeks, we will be doing a Zoom with the Wayne Rotary Club and doing a That'll live uh, broadcast. Yes, yeah, so that's going to be fun. And uh, topic to be disclosed later. So you got to listen to know. Just a little plug. <laughs> little You're plug. Really, baiting, really baiting the listeners. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you know what, Christina? Last week, which I think was episode 16, I think. That's um, correct. The myth of being caught up. The myth up. of being caught up. And I told a story about uh, a number of years ago, mom wouldn't let them install professionally. And I did it to save $50. And it cost me like $75 and <laughs> an entire day at a weekend and, <laughs> and pulling my neighbor story. in. Yeah. You know, it got me thinking about something and, and, you know, we talked about it and you liked the idea. So I thought that would be the topic for today, which was the idea of opportunity cost. And so what, what I mean by that is n not necessarily that I was going to do anything productive that weekend. <laughs> Watching TV would have been would a have. lot more fun <laughs> than what I did. But the idea that I don't know what I'm doing and I attempted to install a dishwasher, which took hours and hours, forget the money because, well, I mean, you can't forget the money, but, you know, the $25 difference. But it was really literally hours of my time and aggravation and frustration and all that stuff. And that's the idea of what an opportunity cost is. Basically, we all have multiple choices of directions to take. And what's the cost of choosing the choice we made versus another choice? So for example, let's say I could have done work with a client that day, or even for a few hours and made $500. But because I saved $50, and spent lost, the entire afternoon. <laughs> you lost four hundred fifty dollars. Correct. That would be an opportunity cost. Yeah. No, I like this, and I mean, it's interesting because we say opportunity cost, right? And it's a financial term, but it's applicable not only to money. It's applicable your time being your greatest asset. It's applicable from a, a time perspective, right? So if mm -hmm. you start thinking about your time a little bit differently in terms of what your time is worth. And you can do that from looking at what do you make in your job and divide out the hours you work and figure out what is your time worth, right? right. Um, or you can just think of your own self-worth <laughs> if that number doesn't please you. <laughs> right. But thinking about what your time is worth and then starting to weigh and measure the time that you invest in different activities to figure out is it worth it and what is the cost of everything that you do maybe makes you start to look at the way you're spending your time and the things you're committing to a little bit differently. I think one of the, the biggest microeconomics examples, right, or pictures they paint is of Tiger Woods, right? So they talk about Tiger Woods should not mow his own lawn, not to compare you, you and Tiger I. Woods, you know, not to compare you and Tiger Woods, but Tiger Woods should not mow his own lawn because if he makes, let's just say $10,000 an hour, right? And it takes him an hour to mow his lawn. He could pay a landscaper $200 and essentially save himself $9,800 or make right. make $9,800 with that hour of time if he were doing something productive with it. Even if you just think about your mental peace, right? Going back to that myth of being caught up, these mm -hmm. two topics kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, they because, kind of blend. Yeah, yeah they blend because we're always looking for more time to do things. And if you start thinking about your time in terms of what is every action or everything I'm signing up for going to cost me. So this, this is where it applies. It applies everywhere. 
And I think if we all thought about it more, we wouldn't make some of the silly decisions or not, not even silly, but the less than optimal decisions that we make. So for example, in my own case, years ago, I want clients, right? Money. So you kind of take on business, take on clients, take on jobs in order to pay your bills. But if you realize that at a certain point, if I have three clients that seem to take up a lot of time and I'm earning the least amount of money from them, then if I'm aware of this concept, then it behooves me to fire those clients <laughs> in a nice way, stop doing work for them. You start to panic and go, well, I'm going to lose some money on that. But it opens up the quote opportunity to choose and go look for more clients that better fit my mold where I'd make more money and work more within how I operate. And that's, that's yeah. the idea. We can do that in everything, in my job, your job. If we become aware, and that's what I like about this podcast is I think if people listen and it just makes you aware of something and say, hey, you know what? I think I'm wasting time on certain activities that I'm doing. Yeah. And if I well, stop right. doing them. We're not, we're not like sharing groundbreaking stuff here, right? Like you're not going to. I like, think we are. You're not, right. but it's not like you heard it first here, right? Like yeah, this right, is right, the right. first time. It, but for me, it's good reminders, right? Like I think mm -hmm. from, from time to time you get in a rhythm. That's why I like listening to podcasts and I like reading different books and things like that, that make you just pause and reevaluate and reprioritize the things that you're doing because opportunity cost, it can cost you your peace of mind. It can cost you time with your family. And going back to that Tiger Woods example, if he got pure joy out of mowing his lawn and it was something that fed his soul, then yeah, maybe it makes sense to make that decision to do it. But unless it's something that's delighting you, well, that's <laughs> the where, likelihood yeah. is that you need to think about it in terms of the cost and reward. Mm -hmm. and, well, I mean, that's, right. That's where hobbies come in. Like, you know, a hobby, you'd, yeah. you'd say, well, Joe, you're not earning any money. You're not, whatever. no, but it's my hobby. I enjoy it. I'm doing what I like. To, and it takes you out of yourself. It, it's, you know, it's like a vacation. It's um, like you playing the guitar, right? Yeah. You go play at bars and you practice. So you're you're putting you're a, lot spending a lot of time into it. it. Right. Which you're has spending a lot of time. And if somebody did an opportunity cost cost benefit. Cost <laughs> and they looked at your time, what right. it's worth, and the fact that you practice and then you go play for a few hours and make a hundred bucks, <laughs> they'd be like, You stupid. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And maybe but, I, and maybe I am, but to your point, that's exactly it. It's a hobby. I have fun. Your friends come, you know, it's a whole, it's right. a social thing. And so you're right. That's a different scenario and where opportunity costs come in, in my every day, what am I doing? What do I find myself doing that maybe somebody else could do? Maybe I can, you know, so delegate to somebody else or maybe stop doing or do it at a different point in time. You follow? And then, right. then take that time and put it into more strategizing or other activities. And that's really it. And there's graphs, you can graph this, but I think the biggest thing about it is the awareness that you brought up, that we become aware of the time wasters or the things we do because it might be easy or we're in a rut and we just do by rote one thing after another and think about where do you want to go and by the way either in your job or in business are you moving in the direction that you want to move on are you accomplishing what it is that you want or are you just pedaling down the road you know yeah like Brad's well, electric bike in terms of, you want to like, turn on the power to the electric bike <laughs> yeah why pedal it, <laughs> like an example for me is I think about, okay, there's a house that has to get cleaned, mm -hmm. right? Do we want to spend our entire weekend after we're working hard all week long mm -hmm. and have very little time or energy to focus on much else? Do I want to spend my whole Saturday or Sunday cleaning my house? No. The opportunity cost, if I was like, okay, I'd like to save $100 every other week, right? If you add up that money. And I, I look at that and certainly there's some people that it's just not affordable. Right. But so I'm, I'm lucky that I can think of it in these terms, but 
I have an opportunity, right? I can spend what would have taken me four or five hours to clean my house on a weekend, or I can pay somebody a hundred dollars every other week to come and do the major work of cleaning, right? The bathrooms, vacuuming, cleaning floors and all that. And they're in and out because they do this all the time and they've got a process and they're just, they're quicker at it than I am. So if I chose to do that, right, I take an entire day to do what I could pay somebody a hundred dollars to do much more efficiently. So like right. that's an opportunity. But, cost but what are you doing? Well, correct. But the answer would be, what are you doing while they're cleaning that makes you more than that hundred dollars? Yeah. If well, you're just sitting in the backyard, I mean, now that's fine. But if you're sitting in the backyard getting sun and you could be cleaning, then you're potentially wasting $100 because you're being lazy. I'm, I'm being funny. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. But if you were to say, no, you know why? Because I meet with my staff on Thursday morning, let's say when the cleaner is there or whatever it is, you're, you're meeting with your people to strategize different client approaches and things like that. You, you follow what I'm saying? You don't want me to have any downtime, I hear. No, you that, can't huh? have any downtime at all. <laughs> no, my point is having somebody come and do that, right? So it's Wednesday morning is when they come. Mm -hmm. I can focus on working, right? Close right. the door to my office. I come out, the house is clean. Allows me then on Saturday to do, maybe it's errands that I have to do, dry cleaning, right. yeah. catching up on other things in life allowing me to do this podcast on mm -hmm. weekends. Right. Well, that's you know, it. exactly. So you think about it that way, just the freedom. Yeah. Opportunity costs can buy you freedom to accomplish other things and to give you peace of right. mind. The beauty of it is that you apply the cost. The opportunity is whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be money. It could be pleasure. It could be leisure. It could be anything. If someone's listening to this and they say, okay, great, that's good. We're talking about a house cleaner. We're talking about Tiger Woods, multimillionaire, and so on. Well, what if I make a few hundred dollars a week and I could be thinking, you guys sound great, but I don't have those pennies to put and have somebody clean for me or to mow my lawn or to do, you know, whatever, because they're always working. And here's what I would say to that is that if you keep this concept in mind and you say, I'm not whether you're not making enough or you're barely making enough or you're just covering your, whatever it is, right. if you even have a semblance of you're not where you should be, what's the opportunity cost of you staying where you are? Staying where you are is barely keeping your nose above the water line so you can breathe. Maybe if you sucked it up one day and took off a morning in order to go on an interview, you follow? If you did your resume yeah. and went on an interview, if you lost $30 or $50 for that morning, and maybe maybe you have to lose that for five mornings because you don't, you're not gonna get a job, but if you lined up interviews, you could get a better job and make more money. And that's the point. What is the cost of staying where you are or doing the same thing over and over again if, in fact, you want something better. If you don't and you're just happy and everything in life is great, then God bless you. You don't have to worry about it. That's the idea. So even with very little money, you should look at what is this opportunity cost. And again, we keep using the fancy term, but it's simple as the path I'm on now versus another path I could take. How can I benefit by potentially taking that other path? Yeah, that's the whole thing, right? It doesn't have to be financially based either. You can think of it value-based. Mm -hmm. What is the value that you get out of an activity you perform? And if you start valuing, putting value, and a dollar value is one of the easier values to put on things, right? So mm -hmm. if you start thinking about your time in terms of money. But if you have a value-based system in terms of how you look at the activities you sign yourself up for, there's the things that you have to do. And then there's the things that you agree to do. And I think it's the things that you agree to do and, or the things that somebody else could do better or more efficient than you. If you kind of change your perspective, something else that Brad and I talk about, Brad's my husband, for those of you that are new to listening, 
we talk about a lot is if you think about opportunity costs in terms of money and maybe the the purest financial term, and I am not going to pretend to be a financial advisor. So this, please don't take this as financial advice as much as it's just an example of something that we do and kind of like a frame of thought and filtering that we put into our savings goals. So we have a mortgage and our mortgage rate is very low. We have a mortgage rate under 3%, which is amazing. So when we think about investing money and putting money into savings, a lot of people will say, I want to pay off my mortgage as soon as I can. And our perspective has been a little bit different in that we want to pay towards our mortgage as much as we need to. However, the most that that's going to cost us is 2.5%, right? That's our interest rate. If we have any opportunity to put money in a savings account or investment that gets more than 2.5%, then that money is essentially making us more money than paying off our mortgage. So just to frame up another reference of opportunity cost, if we can make 4% on that money in savings, or if we can make 8% on that money in an investment account, the opportunity costs more in order to pay off our mortgage. Well, well, you're right. Well, and it would be an investment account. There's no savings account. I know what you mean, but you're you're investing it. Yeah. Whatever. But my point is that's an opportunity. No, you're right. You're right. That's, that's a lot of people feel like, Oh, you know, let me pay off my mortgage. And some people just like to feel that feeling of not having any debt burden or anything. But I think that's the purest where opportunity cost came from. Right. Well, it, it's it's all of it, yeah. But you're you're 100 percent right. If I if I paid, if I pay an extra 500 dollars to the mortgage, but if I take that 500 dollars and put it, like you said, if you were investing it shrewdly and so on, and could make four percent, then you are one and a half percent better than if you paid off the mortgage. You're 100 percent right. Right. So it's basically the opportunity cost of that money or that time is whatever you can do with it. Right. Very good. So if we go back to guitar and this podcast, those are hobbies because we <laughs> there's no financial gain on no. it. Right? <laughs> no, we spend money to do the podcast. That, that's right. That's right. But we're having fun and we fun, get to yeah. be together. And exactly. so you see, so we've made the conscious choice that this is time well spent. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I would continue to prioritize this <laughs> hobby. Very good. Very good. Over cleaning my house. There you go. Love it. <laughs> All right. So thank right, you. Dad. This was good. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you liked what you heard, share with a friend. Yes. Wherever you are, whatever your story, thanks for spending time with us this morning. Now, go and make a difference in your world. Still like it? Yeah. You know what's the opportunity? Bye bye. Thanks for listening.